Five and a half hours east is a college known for choosing what is right over what is easy. Berea College was founded by an abolitionist in 1855 and was the first fully integrated and co-educational college in the South. And Berea College has not charged tuition since 1892. One of the college's most valuable assets is the forested land they own and manage. We have the forest through a happy accident. Uh, we had a faculty member here uh, who was interested in forestry, and he also noticed that you could buy cleared land, land that had been clear cut, I mean, for pennies on the acre. So with his own money, he began acquiring this land. And uh, upon his death, he gave it all to the college. So we had probably a couple thousand acres already at that point, and this was in the 20s. The college has over 9,000 acres of beautiful forest, which is a notable hiking destination, as well as a critical watershed for the region. But there was a problem with the way the land was managed. So our logging practices in the 30s, 40s, and 50s were all mechanized, and in fact, that continued all the way through the early part of my presidency. One of the things I encountered earlier in my time here was we were doing a logging project, uh, well, to the south of campus near the southern boundary of our forest. And a neighbor who uh, in that area who happened to have a connection to the college said, hey, President Rulos, do you know what's going on in your forest near our house? So uh, he described a pretty awful scene up there with uh, oil spills, big trucks, bulldozers, skidders, keeping people awake, running them off the road and stuff. So um, I went up and had a look and yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. But it was also sad to see what was happening to the forest at that point. So right from the start, I thought, I, I hope we can do this another way going forward. That was about the time when I ran into Jason Rutledge and uh, Wendell Berry. Uh, and they were pretty insistent that this might be the place to try another way of managing the forest. Jason and Wendell Berry's influence at Berea College actually started with their current forest manager over 30 years ago. I'm Clint Patterson. I'm the college forester here at Berea College. So I picked up this magazine whenever I was 17. I was a senior in high school. It was late July or early August, 1987. And this is Jason Rutledge, who many years later, I ended up getting to know. Actually, when I moved to Berea, I realized that he was closely associated with Wendell Berry, who I discovered while I was in college, whenever I read a book uh, called The Unsettling of America. Jason's influence being this guy that had this passion to continue to use horses in forest management and you know, appropriate use of technology and continue that culture. Paired with Wendell Berry, he was like a, a real inspiration to me. The old ways of doing things seemed to me to make a lot of sense and shouldn't be replaced. People need to stay connected to the land and the culture that thousands of years went into. As we thought about how to manage the forest, uh, we thought of uh, looking at other models. And one thing that occurred to us was the idea of community-based forestry. And we had found out uh, through Clint Patterson, our forester and others, that the Black Forest region of Germany uh, is known worldwide for a forest that's cultivated but also connected to the town, Freiburg, uh, which is in its immediate vicinity. And there's a very close relationship between the town and the forest. The administrators at the Berea College uh, uh, thought that it would be a good idea that we went to Germany and studied some of the oldest watershed management situations on Earth, because that's the primary way that uh, Berea College has afforded to own the forest land they have is because it exists as a watershed, a protective ecosystem for the water that's sold off of that land into the college and into the city of Berea. So even though it may be tiny fractions of a little bit of money that comes out of every gallon of water that comes there, that water is all created from that forest. Because as a great hydrologist told me many years ago, the most valuable product to come out of any forest is the water, not the trees. 
And because the forest is the greatest influence on mitigating the impact of human presence uh, uh, in purifying and filtering the water. So Berea College sent a small group to the Black Forest of Germany to see a forest that had been lived in, relied upon, managed, and protected for thousands of years. Usually horses uh, are named Max. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing the, the forest there, the way that they were appreciated and managed and, and taken care of, and I think inspired everybody on the trip. And it, it really gave the administration confidence that, well, if our forester thinks that's the way he wants to manage our forest, that looks good to us. It opened the door to pursue horse logging as a component of how we manage the forest, as well as a flexible harvesting scenario that incorporated more than just, you know, volume and dollars, but incorporated other values that I think need to be sustained if we're gonna honor our great commitments, in particular service to Appalachia and what we call the sustainability commitment. One of the most important aspects observed during the Black Forest Expedition was the sense of community ownership and shared responsibility in caring for the forest. We thought that that would add value for us. Um, we, have, we have challenges in managing our forest where we'll have vandals come in, people paint on the rocks, occasionally there's uh, tree rustling going on. And the more you can get the community into your forest and feeling part of the operation, the more feet you have on the ground, the more eyes you have. And, uh, uh, and of course, it's, it's a wonderful experience. It adds value to people's lives. Anybody can go get mushrooms. You can go spend time in the woods. Uh, you can uh, add it to the educational experiences for your children. There are all kinds of, of uh, arrangements there, so you learn all about the forest. But the important thing is the whole community doesn't own the forest uh, in the technical sense, but they own it by in including it in their lives by being there, they provide a, an important piece of stewardship that you can't do with your own small group of employees. And now, when people come to this forest, they may be lucky enough to watch powerful horses help protect an important community asset. People are fascinated by seeing the horses at work. If, uh, if we set up a demonstration in a place where people can get to, I, we can't, you can't keep the people away. They are, they're there in their hundreds to watch this. Uh, and it is, it is just amazing to see not only horses at work, but also all of the craftsmanship that it takes to do this safely. I mean, you're, you're bringing down something that weighs hundreds of tons. Uh, you're trying to do it in a way that doesn't do any damage around and doesn't hurt the loggers or the horses. Um, and there's a craft there. There's no question that Berea College uh, is a living model of watershed management. Uh, I think we're working uh, hard to help them uh, become a model of, of education by including uh, the approaches that we have there now because uh, they did make the decision to hire Healing Harvest Forest Foundation trained biological woodsmen to come and be practitioners in their forest. 